Hello, everybody, and welcome to the introductory Grindcast, the Grind XP main podcast. Uh, I am joined by my co-owner, friend, all-around good guy, simplification to the max, Beta. Say hi, Beta. <laughs> hey, everybody. Yeah. Glad to be here today. I bet you are. I bet you are. All right. Now, uh, this is the uh, Ignorial uh, Grindcast. Uh, this is going to be the new way we're going to be uh, covering news all over the Blizzard universe and what a big Blizzard universe it is now. Yeah. Uh, Huge. So much to cover. Yeah. It's going to be a little mind blogging. We need more people. Hint, hint. We have an app. We, ha- <laughs> we need people. Looking, mm-hmm. looking for more. <laughs> looking for more. <laughs> looking for staff. L of S. Yeah, we have. To, yeah. We really have to make that video um, to get the word out there. Um, but with that aside, let's get back to uh, this is our first podcast. We we are going to cover some Blizzard news because there was a lot put out today. As I put it, it was like they said, uh, ready to cannons, and then they exploded and killed an entire British Armada somehow, somewhat. So, uh, I guess with that, um, I guess let's just start off uh, with, uh, who are we? Uh, I will actually give you the honors of going first. Okay. So, my name's Justin Corral. I'm uh, 22 years old. Um, I live here in a uh, little north of Seattle, in Linwood. I've been playing Blizzard games ever since I was... Since I was really really young starting with the original Diablo series um, absolutely fell in love with Diablo even though I was a kid and it might have might have damaged me as an adult a little bit but uh, I still kind of have nightmares of the butchery you know? everyone has those those oh god that was such a good moment it's like a gaming history moment seriously but um, yeah so it just it branched off from original Diablo onto Diablo 2 and uh with the expansion of Diablo 2, the Lord of Destruction. And then uh, I played that for the longest time. You know, there's a bunch of other games coming out in the, you know, I played that for years, years and years and years of Diablo 2, Lord of Destruction. And then uh, my stepdad actually got me into World of Warcraft. And. So your that, stepdad was the. Your, yeah. Like, he, he was the cause of the issue. Yes, he was basically the reason I got into gaming at all. He's the one that introduced me to Diablo and everything like that. Um, so, yeah, I got him to think of that. So, that was fun. And, um, yeah, World of Warcraft, oh my god, I played that for since basically since uh, release, you know. Uh, it had been out for a couple months, but I was very early vanilla WoW player. And... Um, I actually just stopped playing WoW a couple months ago, and I haven't I haven't missed it at all actually. Um, but that doesn't mean I'm not interested in yeah and World of Warcraft news or anything like that. I, I still keep up with you know what's going on in the World of Warcraft universe because you know that's my job. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, and then Diablo three came out. Finally came out. Man, I've been. When I when I heard the news of Diablo three, I I nearly peed my pants in anticipation. Like I didn't think there was ever going to be a Diablo three um, ever made. So I was super excited, super pumped for that. And um, yeah, and then we got I went to BlizzCon. Um, so jealous. Uh, last year, last this, year I think. This is this is now it was two years ago, but. This is my oh, first yeah. time. At, at, yeah. least I, at least I have you as a tour guide. You know? mm-hmm. You'd be like, don't yeah. do that, don't eat there, eat here. <laughs> don't touch that chicken. Interesting uh, thing. Come here. They've got spikes on the top of their um, their light poles so the birds don't sit on the light poles and poop on your car. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, they have uh, like some of the shopping centers around here. Like above the signs, they have like little needle uh, things. It looks like like just plastic spikes that just on top of the signs sort of the same purpose a little medieval Mm -hmm. about it though (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah but when i went to blizzcon we got to test out diablo 3 pvp um doing the arena and oh it was actually really 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 fun 
You're one of the <laughs> you're one of the lucky true chosen that's actually played authentic Diablo three PvP as it was yep. intended. As it was intended. Well, I mean, sort of. Bastard. I mean, it, I mean, your <laughs> skills were limited to you know what they gave you, um, but it was still really fun. It still had like the health globes and everything like that. And um, I played the, the I, my most favorite character was obviously the wizard because I I'm a wizard guy. I like mages and stuff, and mm-hmm. I dread the uh, same way. S- same way. Um, I think game I think games secretly know to punish me when I stray away. Yeah, I don't know. I I really liked my mage class, but I I couldn't do it end game for Inferno because they just weren't tanky or versatile in um end game in teams and stuff. So mm-hmm. it's just I need I ended up me I ended up uh, cuz I only play hardcore Diablo cuz that's just how I roll. So um when Diablo 3 came out, of course, I made the wizard and I got it to Inferno, no problem. I was actually competing with Crip at the time. I was actually ahead of Crip in progression, uh, but then oh, school then started catching that. up. Yeah, yeah. I beat. I was one of the first players in the world to beat uh, Inferno Butcher. I did it with this awful build. It was the worst build ever. It used no spells besides the Poison Hydra, and it just had all defensive uh, utility spells like Ice Armor. Well, that's the way every class pretty much had to be. Yeah. Was it was this like old kick you in the ass Inferno? Yes, this was old kick you in the ass Inferno. I was ahead of everybody at the time. I didn't know anybody else in the world that was ahead. Um, but then uh, you know school started catching up, and then I kind of I died later on too. Um, yeah, to a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> such as such as life, you know. I wasn't playing. I was I was playing real casually, um, so you know I didn't take it. I didn't, you know. It was fine. And then after that, I I basically fell off uh, the Diablo three competition. I just I just kind of lost interest in trying to get four world first because of school and stuff. I'm like I can't I can't go through put all that time into going through it again. So. Um, yeah, so I ended up going through the game again with a monk, and I ended up beating Diablo Inferno. Um, this was after the nerfs, though, so yeah, it wasn't as it wasn't as impressive, but it was still a feat of strength. You know? And then we got uh, we formed Diablo Expressions, obviously, and uh, Diablo Expressions was was pretty fun. Uh, got to know a lot of people, and then ended up. Um, Leaving Diablo expressions to Pursue stick with school other and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Leave it that, that. Yep. And then came back. Now that I'm out of school and got a little bit more time on my hands, came back for Diablo X, or for Grind XP, and it's been a blast. It's been a blast ever since. So that's that's me in a nutshell. Oh, I've got. Uh, I have a wonderful girlfriend. We've been in a relationship for five years plus. <laughs> People keep asking me when we're going to get married, and I say I don't. Uh, <laughs> but she wants to get married. <laughs> I would not be lying if I didn't say I, I wouldn't be thinking the same exact thing right now. I'm like, right. Hmm. Everyone's like, when are they going to get married? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. Except I'm a guy, and I'm like, no, we don't rush those decisions. We don't. No. <laughs> I'm 22 saying. years old. I'm like, I was, I was still young. Like, I got, I got some time on my hands so yeah. it ain't no big thing i don't i don't view it i don't view marriage um as most people do i guess i don't know i don't i don't feel it's anything more special than my um relationship currently is like what you got you like what you got and you like what you got yeah i don't know i think marriage is overrated personally <laughs> that's probably why i'm not married yet so oh, yeah 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 all <laughs> right all right well we just hit like the 11 minute mark. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, who am I? Oh, God. Um, how do I go about this? Um, well, I guess my real name is Robert Goldenson. Yeah. Golden Sun. There's, there's, there's an H in there. There's a pesky little H. I somehow got in there. I've been to Ellis Island. I live in New York. 
uh, on Long Island. So I've been to Ellis Island. We found our relatives, and the H wasn't there. So you know, someone just had some fun. Wow! When Somebody just messed up on the birth certificate. <laughs> no, 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 no! It was uh, during like the whole like immigration thing. Like they would just like if you would say your name, and they would just spell it as best they could and move on because there were so many immigrants coming. I thought that was a little funny. Like, oh, so yeah. there really was an H. So every, every time someone tries to pronounce my last name, it could have been a whole lot easier. Great job. Early immigration forces, whatever. Um, so yeah, I am currently 28, but I have a shit ton close to being 29 in January. And I'm already 29 in my head. I already have to correct myself to say 28 and not 29. This always happens around this time. Uh, oh god. Uh, as far as my Blizzard history, I came in with StarCraft originally. Back, I think I still have like a version 1. something disc, not an original 1.0 disc. That would be something to behold. So I originally came in with StarCraft and then I naturally got Brood War uh, when that came out. Uh, I love those games to death. I really like the lore. I really grew to like the lore of StarCraft a lot more than probably anything else. Uh, I did make custom maps that my friends and I played on. Just basically put like two Vespin gas everywhere, max them out, put as like 10 mineral fields, just so we didn't have to like, go into three bases. Uh, we weren't really competitive as much as we were casual and just played for fun. Uh, what, what else? Uh, well, I guess uh, from there. Uh, I did play other games like Counter Strike and uh, at the time, and then the same person who got me into Counter Strike, that's why I bring it up, got me into WoW, and I got hooked for five years after that. I, it's like I would say I blamed him, but I still had the ultimate justice over him. He brought me in when his priest was 38 and I was zero, and this was like when grinding was a long haul in that game, it took forever. And I beat him to 60. Like, I got huh. that into it that quickly. It's like, I just got into it. I hit 60. And I remember the exact moment I got 60. We were all in a guild. Uh, we had just brought in this new hunter who was 60 himself. And he was helping me in uh, Silithus. And I was doing those quests. Like, my last five levels. Because... Oh, because Silithus was an awesome zone when I first came out because it was like the two, it was like the go zone to finally finish off your leveling. Because all the other zones were either too big, they were annoying, they didn't have enough quest experience, you had to run dungeons. Silithus could get you easily from 55 to 60 back in the day because the quest experience was just that good. And it was about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. The sun, you started getting a little bit of sun, sunrise peeking in through my window as the sunrise was just beginning to peak in game. And I, and I handed in the last quest and like the game and real life kind of meshed together in my sleepy haze. Oh, and geez. then I dinged 60 and that was a great moment. And that was oh, how, how many years ago? Like 2009, 2010? <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I still no. I still have that clarified moment of how it all went down. So, yeah. I think it was before that. It's been out for more than five years since Vanilla. Uh, 2008 or 2007, I don't know at this point. It's, yeah. it's, it's almost a decade, okay? Let's put it that way. So, I guess a it's little funny. bit further... Wow. Oh, it's, I was going to say something. Oh, uh, it's funny that you mentioned the Silithus being awesome. I have this like distinct memory of when the gates of uh, Ankaraj mm -hmm. opened and I was played on the one of the highest populated servers at the time and there was like a huge war going outside and it was actually causing the server to like crash and a GM ended up porting uh, porting down there and revealing himself and had to tell everyone stop killing each other because you're crashing the server guys I think every server was like that uh, ours, and, ours definitely was like that too yeah, and then uh, it was funny because then people ganked him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, got to put and the then, god mode on. Yep. <laughs> god. It was funny. So I guess to just round out my WoW experience, um, I wound up being like 
you were saying I played the mage class almost exclusively during my entire time. It wasn't until just before Cataclysm I rolled a rogue and had a rogue and a mage max levels uh, both up there. Um, I was mage class leader in two guilds. I wound up inheriting a carcass of a guild that there were still 20 people actively playing. And I remember I met we myself along with another guild that was interested in picking up people we not only managed in one day over the course of five hours to complete a merger but to exchange ranks get the, that guild's first attempt at a 40 man along with the new people that were coming in through the remnants i was leading and we managed to actually get to a good point. We didn't down any bosses, but we managed to actually clear trash all the way up uh, to and including the beast. We just didn't bring the beast down, but that was to be expected. But it, that's actually really miraculous when you think about it now. Like, doing a great uh, guild merger, and then you actually go into a 40-man raid, and then you actually are somewhat coherent. It's like, that doesn't exist now in these days, I don't think. No. It's hard yeah. to get 40 people to work together. I think that was part of the uh, design strategy when making a lot of the uh, early dungeons. It was like, yeah, yeah, you know, it, it might not be super hard to down these bosses, but it's going to be hard just because you're trying to have 40 people trying to cooperate <laughs> yeah, it, and down the right target and stuff. Yeah, all the 40 mans, the first thing above all else was coronation and communication. Ugh. And that's the hardest thing in these raids. But, uh, yeah, so that pretty much rounded out my WoW experience, and then, uh, StarCraft 2, if I'm remembering the order of things, came out, uh, Wings of Liberty, bought that, uh, played through the single player, uh, just for the story, because I, 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 like I said before, I really like the storyline, so I did that, did, uh, the first 50 free, or, like, unranked, that set you what rank you were when you went into ranked mode, uh, the, oh yeah, and the noise you're hearing in the background is my lovely wife who just got home from work. Hi! She says hi. Her name is Alyssa, just in case you need to know. That's all I think she would want to be on the podcast. So, we'll go from there. So if you hear random noises in the background, you know why now. Uh, so, like I was saying, uh, played StarCraft 2. Uh, really liked that. Liked how they, even though everyone complains, it's like they updated the, that the graphics, gave a couple of new units, that gave them a storyline, and that was about it. That's the exact reason why I bought it, because I'm just the lore and basic storyline, and that's good enough for me kind of player. Uh, so the same thing with Heart of the Swarm that came out. But uh, the bigger thing that I, it, is increasingly becoming my go-to game is uh, Diablo 3, because I really got into it. Unfortunately, I didn't play Diablo 1. I probably only played about 20 hours Diablo 2. Yeah, I'll admit it Ooh. on air. Yeah, I know. People be like, <laughs> <laughs> and like kill the non-believer. <laughs> Shun him. We are not wow. listening to him at all in this game. He has lost you know what all we have our to do now. respect. You, got it for, you could have got it for five bucks the other day. You should have just bought it. I have it. it. I, I have played That's it. even worse. <laughs> well, played 20 I, minutes well, of Diablo 2. No, no, no. I played, I played 20 <laughs> hours. If I said it's minutes, I meant hours. I did play that much because I want to know at least what the old was so I, I can at least have some inkling no. when the new you one You got to have out. a playthrough, not... Like, <sighs> Act 1 isn't the, very then, fun. Then, then you have to run me through it, all right? All right? Okay. You have to run I me will. through it, all right? <laughs> so... You have... So... I played Diablo 3, I really got into it. Again, played the wizard, uh, got in there. I think I stopped for a period of about six months, like three months after release to about December of last year, it was. And then I got back into it and I came back to the game with a renewed focus of, you know, I just want to play the class for what it is. And then go from there, do the upgrades and everything. You know, just, just try to have fun with it. Don't make it all about like, I need to be the best wizard on na server like 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 that mentality is great but unless you really have the means to make it happen it's only going to defeat you in the end so i just decided to have fun with it and slowly through like beginning of this year especially with all the uh, monster power changes the paragon levels the boa is coming out 
Um, it really made it really a good game. And it, I really felt bad when people were still bashing it because they were still basing it on what it was six months, even three months compared to where they left or even further than that. It was really, I felt really bad. So that's when I took up the mantle and switched from Diablo's questions to Grind XP so I can cover all Blizzard games. And that's why we're both here right now talking to you and uh, just try to get the word out there and it's been growing uh, Hearthstone came out was like the Kickstarter game that we got beta keys for still giving away beta keys if I, I get that little plug in and uh, yeah uh, Justin and myself are having fun with uh, Hearthstone we've been dueling each other uh, I just he, had a really awesome idea so for what, Friday you, you not kicking my ass in Hearthstone game no, for Friday. You know how there's that meme where it has the guy holding all the lemons? He's like, why can't I hold all these lemons? Do you know that meme? Mm, I, I don't, that may be the only meme I've never seen before. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Anyway, you get that guy and you get like the you get the Hearthstone icon. Like, why can't I hold all these beta keys? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to give them away. Because the buyers are taking them all. <laughs> Yeah, so that pretty much winds up my Blizzard portfolio, as uh, I guess you could say. Uh, kind of the most recent thing was Hearthstone, but just looking forward to Reaper Souls. Hopefully that beta starts relatively quickly. Uh, yeah, I imagine it's got to start very, very soon. Like, if not the day after BlizzCon. Like, I don't think it's going to release before BlizzCon, but... I don't think so, but that would be really sad for me because I feel like I'll be tremendously behind reporting and live streaming if I can. Oh, that'd be such a, a great and sad day. But I kind of expected the the beta to already be started, honestly. Um, judging what people were saying at uh, at Gamescom, because mm -hmm. um, they, they already they already said they had a full playable beta, and I know that uh, Diablo fans has been already like getting patch notes and stuff um, all right so yeah uh, yeah i guess with that let's just move on to the next segment i'm uh, sorry so i guess segment b what are we doing in game or since this is the intro it will be the what are we looking into and uh as you were saying yeah uh diablo fans has been i think they have they've had three data mines already yeah, it's ridiculous. Like, huge, huge data mines. Like, everything about the game is pretty much already in public hands. Yeah, it's it's at pretty this much point. already, you know. But the thing that gets me that I noticed is the first one was really, really big. And then the second one was still very big, but smaller. And the third one, something tells me that there's actually four. I don't know why. There's either three or four. But what I'm getting at is that each patch has been getting at a pretty good rate progressively smaller and smaller until like the latest one it's it's almost trivial it's like a regular patch uh that you would see in the game if not smaller so that that's where i tend to agree with you it's like if they're really doing that much that quickly especially with the just released news that not only are we going to be able to play a demo of reaper souls on pc but they're also going to have it ready for the PS4 on the console at BlizzCon, uh, ready to be tested out by us. Hmm. The, that should be interesting. I'm excited. I didn't it, didn't realize that. Pretty excited. Yeah, I mean, when you combine those two, I mean, the beta. It, I mean, as much as we think Blizzard is slow, uh, at least on the Diablo Three front, they have hauled ass. Wait, hold up. It's going to be available for the PS4 too. Like. Yeah, it's. It, is it gonna is it gonna be like a a release on both um, PC and console, you think, at the same time? Well, I don't think the console is going to be released because that has to be a little bit more... That that has to be naturally more polished, I would mm -hmm. think, before it goes out. I mean, even more the PC. I mean, their native environment is the PC and uh, doing patches and just setting it out that way. I mean, they're pretty much at their liberty to do patch updates. They can do one every other day forever mm -hmm. on a PC. But it'd be kind of annoying to do that on the console, so I would assume they would get yeah, it. Yeah, it's not really feasible. Yeah, that they would set a release date for the PC, and then maybe anywhere from three to four months after that, they'd probably do it for the console just so they can get the initial initial one. 
like 2.1 bugs patch and just monitor it and then everything after everything looks good just shove everything into a disc print stamp them out and ship them out and give enough time of course for the advertising and the hype and all that jazz and give people enough time to actually play Diablo 3 on the PS3 and then have an expansion you know a decent amount of time afterwards that's another thing to consider but uh yeah so that's one good great thing of interest on top of just all the incredible stuff like all the hopefully new crafting stuff they do uh the crusader being a new class uh paragon 2.0 hopefully getting more clarifications as far as the points uh how, how are they going to work with the difficulties now uh, there's supposedly this new or difficulty level called torment but people are, are heavily speculating it's either going to replace uh, like like normal a nightmare or you, be you probably shouldn't be spoiling too much. There might not be people that want to uh, okay hear all that. This including is including partially is, myself. <laughs> sorry. So I, I I so like first one bug test include including spoiler tags and everything. Sorry, <laughs> apologize. We're trying to make this official. Trying to be, trying to have a good time. So we're trying mm -hmm. to include spoiler tags. But then let me just sum it up by there's a lot, a crap ton, a metric ton, however you want to put it, of stuff that we can still learn, even with all the data mine stuff that's still out there. And uh, that's just for Diablo 3, let alone, you know, supposedly a new WoW expansion is almost expected at this point. Yeah, I would be very, very surprised if there was not another expansion at this uh announced at this BlizzCon. Because they've been doing one like every year and they haven't... This Pandaria has been going on for a while, so... I I'm ready for a new WoW expansion, honestly. I'm I did not care for Miss Pandaria. I played a lot of it. About the state of the game um, they didn't really go into details about it but they just said like yeah you got like wreck full vanguard sodas they're all going down there um, to give feedback in the game which I think is gonna be pretty sweet um, th I mean obviously the developers do a good job but they've they said from the start that they they didn't want like wow 
you know, they didn't care too much for the PvP. Like, they had it in there and they sort of supported it, but it was never a fully supported um, product. And it'll be interesting to see with this next expansion, they try to kind of bring back on the esports a little bit by making, you know, I'd really like to see spectating games. Like, like if you're going to be an esport, you need to have an easy way to spectate games. I think, I think, the, I think that's Call just like Hearthstone a too. <laughs> yeah, Hearthstone. Um, Hearthstone is so new, and uh, the interesting thing about that is that it's made in this program called Unity. Um, Unity is a free open software development. Uh, kid, so anybody could have made Hearthstone. Like, I mean, there's obviously some coding involved. You know, I okay. There's a bunch of coding involved, but there's a ton of visual elements. Um, and I think that's what's the, probably the coolest part of uh, Hearthstone for me is that it's just made in this in this program that um, you know, you and a group of like 20 people, if they got together, they probably could have made Hearthstone. Um, that's assuming they got the right talents, and I think that's really cool. Um, I, if you listen to the Hearthstone opening cinematic that they had, they said like, "Yeah, we started out with like a group of five people, and now I think." And then they said they they branched out a little bit since then, and they've got a group. They had a group about fifteen, but now if you look in the the credits, uh, they've got like everybody working on it. You know, they they rushed it. They, they're rushing it for I think they're rushing it for the uh, holiday season yeah, so they got a bunch, yeah, bunch of people th- polishing it up yeah I know we kind of hop skip from uh, WoW to Hearthstone but just to I guess add on is Hearthstone was almost their challenge to themselves that after all these years uh, I, I think I remember almost verbatim that uh, Rob uh, Palbano oh god am I saying his name wrong <laughs> whatever uh, sorry tip my hat however you want to say it um, he basically said that they wanted to see if they could go back to their roots and start with like a small, talented team of all different aspects of uh, the gaming. You know, you know, your development, your testing, your coding, your visual, uh, your artists, and all that kind of stuff. And if they could have a small team just come up with a concept, bring that concept to reality, test it, bring it to a alpha, then beta stage, and then uh, bring it to market and do that all within a year. I mean, that was that what that's what Hearthstone is. That it's more of a, ch- a self challenge to Blizzard that we as fans just happen to get the benefits of because we get to play their fruits, their the labors of their yeah, uh, and I think all that's... that sort of stuff. And I, I really believe they're probably going to try to nail it out, as you said, for the holiday season, and just try to capitalize on all that cash money for people who want to buy packs. <laughs> well, the thing is, yeah, exactly, right? Like, it's going to be a free-to-play game, so I think I think free-to-play games are great. Um, I play a couple free-to-play games like myself. Um, I obviously play Hearthstone. I've played Path of Exile, Dota, League of Legends. Um, I think if done correctly, and obviously these have been done correctly because they've been, you know, they have a huge market. They're super successful, and I think that's what's really interesting about Hearthstone. Uh, this is, you know, I'm I'm studying to become a game developer too, and so when I look at these games, it's like there's not a whole lot of content in these games, but at the same time there is, right? Like League of Legends, the whole game is about like four gigs, I think, and you take World of Warcraft, you know, it's like over thirty gigs at this point, I think, of like downloads. So like, there's a ton of stuff, mm-hmm. but League of Legends is more popular um, at the moment, you know. Obviously, there's you know, World of Warcraft had its peak, and League of Legends has its peak too. But um, I just think it's fascinating these these smaller games, which are less development time, but they're they're the the mechanics of the game are what draws people to it, um, not all of the content in it. I don't know. It's it's a complicated formula, but I, I like a I like it though. No, I get exactly what you mean. I mean, like. For me, SimCity 2000 and Sim Tower were games I loved for the longest time, and I still love to this day. I, I think I've reached the OS uh, block <laughs> that I can't play them anymore because just because the OS. But like Sim Tower was really simple back in the day. You just built the tower. It, it, it was really simple. You could run it off the disc, 
Like, if you remember those days. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna play a game. I'm just gonna pop the CD and, like, what? <laughs> yeah. what? What's that? that yeah, be... a CD. Who uses those? Like, CD <laughs> or let alone running a game off of it. and But saving everything to the computer. Because God. you couldn't. Like, those days. Um, I remember... When, uh, when I worked at GameStop, I think it was like Mr. Pandaria expansion when it released. I'm pretty sure that didn't even have a disc in it. It was just like a code. It was just like, code yep. Redeemed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like it had this huge box. It looks like there's just supposed to be a disc in it. Uh, it might have not been Mr. Pandaria. It might have been like Guild Wars or one of the, you know, one of the popular MMO games. Um, well, you need an internet connection to play it. So right. you can download exactly. it. Even if it takes you a week. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think it's just funny. It's like, yep. Yep, we are not doing discs anymore. Here's that empty box and and a code and some advertisements. Pretty much, but yeah, it's like that's what Hearthstone kind of brings me back to, and all that. In fact, uh, I still have to get in and make a deck for tomorrow for Friday's live stream. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> too too much stuff on the plate, but getting it done. The yeah, there's definitely Hearthstone. We touched on Diablo. We touched on WoW. Uh, StarCraft 2, as I'm looking at the schedule, I kind of feel sad for StarCraft 2, because there's only one event for it. It's called StarCraft 2 Update, which is kind of like... I, I just have that, like, overly sad feeling, like, alright guys, we really screwed up. We're about, <laughs> Can we're we, about, we're we about please have you back? <laughs> we're about six to months to a year behind schedule on the last, uh expansion please don't hate us we promise they'll be out soon and not even blizzard soon okay maybe blizzard soon all right yeah i didn't even notice that there was just one starcraft panel that's really uh it's kind of disappointing actually because i know that there was a huge starcraft 2 base out at one point in time but it's just i don't know it's not catching on well, I think that it's also a matter of StarCraft 2 is like the heaviest MLG uh, esports game that they have right now, just in general. Mm -hmm. And there's all the, you know, do they help sponsor events? Do they not? Are they doing enough to support it? Are they doing enough to get the newcomers involved? I mean, there was a big patch couple of months ago that introduced uh, actually XP and leveling kind of like League of Legends and everything that you would get basic uh, rewards uh, superficial ones like icons and everything but enough to keep you going and leveling up and there's a whole bunch of uh, quality of life uh, adjustments made as well along with the usual StarCraft 2 patch notes and everything like that but uh, I think that they're probably looking to do more uh I haven't been paying as much attention to StarCraft 2 as far mm -hmm. as like the competitive side, but I do love the lore. I do love the story. I do love the characters and just the whole development. And I'm really anxious just to get Legacy of the Void just so I can see the Protoss, the, the race I probably love and admire the most in this game, just finally have their moment in you know, this game to finally kick ass and finally take back everything that was taken away from them. <laughs> it, uh -huh. it, it just seems like they got trounced on the most in, like, the recent game history or and or they were, like, used or have uh -huh. been on this... Like, Zero Two just feels like he's been on this one long quest to regain, like, just some fragment of the former Protoss glory. And... I just, I just wanted to come to that. I just wanted to see Restore to some portion of that. That's, that's just, if they get to that, I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I don't know. I never really got into the whole StarCraft genre, but I might now. I'm starting to get into, uh, you know, the tactical games a little bit more. Well, well, you know... <laughs> With Blizzard being now your all-in-one gaming company, from action RPGs to RTSs to MMO, MMO RPGs, oh God, I'm failing miserably, to your training her games, and congratulations, drumroll, 
finally having a respectable Dota. Dota. <laughs> yes, yeah. we actually got the news today that uh, Blizzard Dota, uh, Ixnay Dota, uh, Blizzard All Stars, nope, Ixnay All Stars, is now just plainly called Heroes of the Storm, which is funny. Which, which is funny because only Blizzard can come up with the name Heroes of the Storm. That is the same exact acronym as one of their other games, StarCraft II: Heart of the Swarm. I thought that was very funny. They actually had a clarification. If you're referring to the game on Twitter, just use the hashtag Heroes, which, thank God, Heroes, the TV series is not going. Otherwise, that would be a little bit more confusing. Yeah, they also got uh, Hearthstone, Heroes of Warcraft. Oh, God. They, they, what are they doing? The, the name development. Uh, <laughs> Watch them change it again. Just like, <laughs> the, the, sorry, guys, one more time. The guy, Fourth time's the charm, right? The guy in uh, the one lonely soul in the cubicle in the back room in charge of coming up with the names must have been uh, <laughs> not getting enough nutrition for like a week or two. It's just, just like, I don't care anymore. Uh, heroes of the store. Okay, good. Uh, what? Yeah. Heart of the store. Okay. I don't understand. Heroes what... of... <laughs> yeah. It's like, we have enough heroes. I'm expecting like the next game to be in there, like, Villains of the Deep. <laughs> it's like... Uh oh, we're going with like this type of mantra. But uh, no, uh, to, to step away from the funny side, we they finally announced it, and there's not one, not two, but three panels uh, at BlizzCon. There's the Heroes of the Storm overview. So if you have no idea what a Dota is, or let alone uh, anything of the Blizzard for variant that they're going to try to pop out of the butt, uh, it's there. They also have uh, Heroes of the Storm deep dive gonna move on from that one <laughs> and then here's the storm live matches so on friday you'll be able to get the overview and on saturday they'll actually have uh credible players who have probably been testing it and who will actually probably play dota's a lot and doing some live matches so we'll be there if we have time we'll be able to see a couple get some oohs and ahs in hopefully everything's polished there's no weird blue screen to death that happened that would be really funny though and, uh, yeah. So, what do you have thought on that? On, um, Blizzard Dota? <laughs> you mean, no, All-Stars. All-Stars. Well, I mean, it's, it's Dota. <laughs> um, I don't know. It'll be interesting. Um, I, there was a panel for it, uh, last year that I went, and I didn't, I wasn't into those type of games at the time, so I didn't. I didn't even play it at all, um, but I think I'm gonna I'm gonna give every game a chance this year. I'm gonna try to go visit every single panel because I'm starting to when I, I'm starting to get into game development a little bit more, and I really want to broaden my horizon. You know, not just MMOs, not just World of Warcraft and Diablo. You know, mm -hmm. um, so I think I'm gonna try to go to every single uh, station and test out all the games see if i like them or not so yeah I'm, um, I'm definitely gonna be the same way i mean I, i'm actually to the point where i i don't consider wow a bad thing anymore which i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing by itself um but it's like even though i made a joke about it before it's like blizzard's really broadened out this year it's like hearthstone uh being a trading card game but digital so it's really accessible to everyone and now finally coming out with uh, Heroes of the Storm, uh, which can access another niche uh, gaming market. They really have a very diverse uh, game universe, like MMO, RPG, hack and slashers, your card game. And they're looking like they're one of the very few companies, if everything goes okay and WoW still chugs along and Diablo 3, uh, gets saved as some people are saying and uh, all the other games carry on I mean Blizzard's really gonna be in a spot where they have all the bases covered pretty much as far as game types that they could so like, the only thing they're missing is an FPS but you know it they call it Blizzard Activision for a reason so they're not gonna have an FPS or they could and that's still the premise for Titan but you don't know what Titan is. We don't know what Titan is. <laughs> Nobody knows what Titan is because they just 
they just announced uh, a couple months ago that they're restarting from scratch again. Yeah, they reset it to 2016. But even when you think about it, even from that point, uh, sorry, I had to correct myself. Uh, even when you think about it from that perspective, 2016 is still not that far away. No, it's really not. It's actually it's um, two years like, from now, basically. Yeah. And if that's when they intended to at least announce something and they give themselves another one to three years, what they kind of been doing for what they did for Wings of Liberty and uh, def Ooh, excuse me, definitely for Diablo 3. Yeah, that is still very much a possibility, and it would give them enough time to, I would say, end WoW or get WoW to the war endpoint of, you know, Sargeras and the Burning Legion, so to speak. That's not a spoiler, that's just WoW's story, it's there. Um, that's At least that's what everyone else and myself thinks, and gives Blizzard enough time to, you know, gracefully get to that point with WoW and then figure a way to convert them to Titan players at the same time when we get there. So, I don't think there's any real rush on Titan or the whole no. master plan between Titan and WoW since they are going to be MMO uh, RPGs. Yeah. Um, from what I've read, though, they're not trying to compete with each other, which is interesting. Um, I don't I don't think that they're just going to like end the WoW franchise. I think it's going to keep going, personally. Yeah, it's it's really interesting because it. But you have to also take consideration two competing MMOs is not a healthy thing, unless Titan really is and stays as they've said that they're that they've kind of converted it away from uh, a subscription based to more of a free to play or a microtransaction kind of type deal. So, but. Hey, that's going to be, what, three, four years in the future by the time we get anything kind of nerd. So, I'm not going to fret over it right now. So, uh, before we go any further, I just want to take a pause and do our first community commercial. Yeah, we're going to we just gonna take a little break and do a little community commercial. And we'll be right back the heck's a community commercial oh oh you'll have to watch the live stream we'll have one view on youtube at least <laughs> because of you <laughs> all right gonna take a little pause be right back hello everybody this is dread from grindxp.com and beta and myself would just want to know if you are a fellow community fan site owner a youtuber live streamer or if you have a guild or clan and you want to try to help uh get your name out there from anyone that's willing to uh, do it uh, this is the spot to do it this is a commercial that will run in between the segments but if we get one from the community and we approve it we'll go through there so if you would like to submit yours make it an audio only make sure people have know exactly where to get get to you uh, give me the link in the email and you can reach either myself or beta through the about us on grindxp.com and just make sure you let people know what you want and what you want to do. And we'll get back to you and hopefully everything will work out well. You suck. <laughs> All right. Back with, I guess, with, I guess we can call part two of the first grind test. Um, now, usually, uh, now, just so you know, the general flow of the show, I guess, after the after this show, because it's kind of intro, BlizzCon, modernization, flabbergast, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, basically, the way we're going to do it is we're always going to start off with how are we in real life? What are we doing in game? And then there's going to be a community commercial. And then segment C, the one right after, which we are in right now, will always be the big topics for the games as they are right now. Well, there's so much news going on right now, we figured we'd just touch a little bit on the BlizzCon news, because that's the most pressing uh, event happening. And uh, a lot of stuff has already happened. Only imagine how much more is going to happen at BlizzCon. And then we, and then Beta and myself will always be picking a, at least one thing to point out in the community, call it our community spotlights, and just to give certain people uh, more noticed in what they're doing, you know, 
give them a little love, give them a little shout out. Just try to help you guys out. And if you want to suggest yourself for a shout out, just go to the website, grindxp.com, hit the about us, and you can either contact Beta or myself uh, through email. You can just let us know why. And then the second to last segment will be the Q&A or feedback. So if again, if you email us or catch us on Twitter or Facebook or on the forums, or anywhere else and you have feedback for us specifically for the podcast or just have general questions for us regarding the games that's where we'll answer it and then we'll finish up with some final thoughts and site promotion stuff which we will definitely have at the end of this uh, little podcast so uh, we already kind of went over the big topics for the game so the I guess we can kind of go into the community spotlight uh, I don't know if beta has one this is still kind of a spur of the moment to get this one done uh, right now. But I think he can at least agree with me uh, on the spotlight that I had chosen. It's appropriate not only for who he is, but also for what he has done for us. Uh, this spotlight is for uh, a community member and actually former staff member, but still close friend of both of ours in Kyria. Uh, he has helped us a lot in the past with the Outlook Expressions. He has also helped us out a tremendous amount with uh, Grind XP. All that cool visual element look for the header, the footer, the background, and all the social slides. Uh, with a little bit of a tiny bit of our guidance. Like, I gave him basically a pencil sketch, and then he converted all that to the glory that we have for our site. Uh, even the slider giving me a template, so I just have to take two seconds to make up new slider images. All that was really done by him, and he deserves a lot of credit, even though he's not an official member of the staff. We just want to make a shout out to him, give him a thanks and a hearty hello. And if you are somehow you found this internationally and you're over in Europe and you like Diablo 3 and you like and you happen to be able to talk Swedish or you can uh, go through Google Translate and at least do it that way. Uh, he is actually part owner or the owner. Uh, I probably got that screwed up, but who cares? Still doing it anyways. Of the Ablu 3 PvP Sweden. It is a, as you guessed it, Swedish P uh, PvP Diablo 3 website. Uh, they have their own little ladder set up, but they also cover the day to day Diablo 3 news, so you can still go to them and get all that news as well. And they just came out with version 3.0, which is very sick looking, very awesome. A little reminiscent of what we had at Diablo Little Expressions a little bit, but definitely is one of its own and a very unique website, and I would endorse it. And I go there, Google Translate every once in a while, just to see what they have. And uh, if you want to get there, it is www.diablo3, number three, not the word three pvp dot se so that's how you get there we'll always have we'll have a link in the description for the youtube video and you'll be able to take a little look and uh you'll enjoy it and they do live streaming as well so i just want to do a little community shout out if beta if you want to say have anything real quick or if you just want to say not in agreement however you want to do it not in agreement <laughs> not in agreement <laughs> <laughs> all right so i guess with that uh, Q&A feedback, as I said, we want we want your questions or your feedback or whatever, good or bad. Sometimes sometimes hate mail could be the best mail, but we prefer to have just nice compliments or. You can send the questions. hate mail to Dread. <laughs> I don't want the hate mail. <laughs> I'll just bulk mail delete that. No, no, I'll, I'll actually read it. It'll, it'll it'll be fun. Sometimes you make friends from the hate mail. I've seen it happen. It's interesting. Oh, geez. A, a former guild actually kind of used that as a weird tactic to con convert convert haters into the guild. Like we would we would camp them and hit them so hard in certain PvP areas in a game called Fall on the Earth. If you happen to know that and how it worked, that they would say, you know what, this isn't worth it. You guys are kicking ass. I'm just gonna join with you. And that happened more often than not. It was pretty hilarious. So, yeah, we want your feedback, and we'll move on to the last segment, 
Um, now this is the fun one. So this is where we get a little site promotion talk. We, we just leave it at the end because we don't want to put it at the beginning and you know make you feel a little bit listening to an advertisement. Uh, with Diablo three, it's necessarily a spoiler. No, no, this wouldn't be a spoiler. This would just be awesome no matter what. Supposedly in the code strings, there's going to be clan and or guild support it's like in there heavily there's a lot there's like rank men, uh mentions there's like there's like the you do not have permission kind of rank so it's heavily suspected that they're going to bring clan and guild support and with that we as grind xp uh we have a ventrilo that is completely open completely free to use by you for any blizzard game or really any game you want it's just there for you to use and just have a good time so we're going to work on it we're going to bring back our old clan and guild uh free uh support program that will allow us to talk to you if you have a guild or clan uh, especially with Diablo 3 or WoW or anything and we'll come up with a set of channels that will be password protected and uh, the higher up officers or just the clan, clan or guild leader will have actually permission to kick people from those channels and actually, you know, be able to do a lot of stuff actually feel like they have their own vent without having to pay for it. Uh, is there anything I'm missing on that? I want to make sure I cover all the bases on that. Nope. Alright, I, I, I did good then. Uh -huh. I, I got the beta stamp of approval. Uh -huh. um, also, we currently have, I don't know if this is going to get up before it actually ends, but we currently do have a uh, show us your beta face. I, actually, you know what? I'm going to pause. I'm going to let beta take this one because this is his original idea and it's awesome. I'm going to let him tell everyone when it ends and all that jazz. Sure. Yeah, so the contest is very, very simple, very straightforward. Um, all you do is, you know, take a photo of you and what your expression would be like if you won a beta key. Like right now, just like, bam, you won a beta key. Like, oh my god, I won a beta key to Hearthstone. Um, we want to see, we want to see what that would look like. And the, so that was, uh, we originally did that contest in Diablo Expressions and it was a blast. We had a lot of fun, a lot of entries. Um, I know everyone had a good time and we got a lot of people subscribed on the forums and it's really great for our community. So we we ended up doing that contest again. We liked it so much that we had to do it again. So we, we did it with Hearthstone. Um, this might... <laughs> We like this contest so much, it might just be a, a thing with like every new franchise we'll do it or expansion, but I don't know about that. But it's, it's, it is really fun. So we no, got it going. No, it is. It is. Sorry. Yeah. I, I, uh, I agree and said the minute it is. It's going. So it started on October 10th, and you still have um, until the 18th. So until tomorrow. So get those the, last minute entries in. And it's midnight. Pacific time Friday. So you most likely actually have probably close to at least a half day to a full day by the time this gets up and you're listening to this right now. Yeah. Um, so that'll be really fun. And then that, and then winners will be chosen for that on the 20th. Um, yeah, and, uh, and then you just submit your uh, entries to our forums. And on that same day, we're actually doing a live stream. It's going to be uh, a pretty long, lengthy live stream. I don't think there's a set time for it yet, but... Uh, uh, I posted uh, noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern, and I think, what, we figure, what, like two to three hours? Something yeah, like that's that. about right. However, however long we last. Mm -hmm. And we're going to give away three beta keys within those three hours, so that's like one beta key an hour, so that's going to be pretty good. Um, so make sure to check out for that too. If you don't, if you don't enter the beta face, at least at least check out our live stream. It'll be a lot of fun. We're gonna have like you know um, packs to open and probably do an arena and talk about the game, and it'll be you know good times. So keep an eye out for that. And then we also got uh, we'll, we actually have some more contests coming up after that, but we, you know kind of hush hush until we get these under wraps. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 
Uh, now, this contest got delayed because we got the Hearthstone keys so late. Uh, drama, drama, drama for the Hearthstone keys. Like, we, like I can't tell you because I think I'd have to be shot by Blizzard people, but it, it, it was really bad. Uh, basically, a few bad apples almost ruined it for all the fan sites <laughs> as far as game or beta keys, but luckily enough, it didn't work out. But that's all you're going to know. That's all I'm going to tell. So, the, I guess the next contest we were doing is we wanted to celebrate Diablo 3, kind of coming back with our with our Reaper of Souls. And we're going to have a, basically, a character costume contest. Uh, now, like I said, it got delayed. I'm probably going to launch it around this time next week, because I want to make sure everyone has at least a week to get do this and submit an entry uh, and have it done for Halloween, because, you know character costume contest you can probably almost guess exactly what you're gonna have to do for it just by that alone we're keeping these things really simple so uh look out for details probably next wednesday or next thursday and yeah that i think that's about it um we mentioned ventrilo we mentioned the live stream as well as the other hearthstone we got one going and also the d3 um I guess the only thing I'm mentioning is the next uh, Grindcast will be uh, pro will, de will definitely be before BlizzCon and it'll probably be our predictions. Like, what do we think is going to be there? What do we think is going to happen? You know, what WoW expansion we think it's going to be? Oh boy, that, that could take up a whole entire podcast by itself probably. <laughs> but we'll try yeah. not to make it that long. And uh, yeah, so uh, uh, and I'm going to have a real trouble doing Diablo 3 because I already kind of know too much but it, it can all change it can all change we have to keep on saying that with Blizzard especially with mm -hmm. Diablo 3 <laughs> but uh, yeah I think that does it for this first uh, grindcast and uh, so yeah I hope everyone enjoyed listening remember to follow us on Twitter which is uh, Bachelor's Grind XP same thing for Facebook uh, we do have a YouTube that this will be uploaded to. And we have our forums, which you can commu communicate directly with us or tell, give us your feedback, hint, hint, and everything else underneath the sun. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I am Dr. Day Dreadscythe, or also Rob, however you want to say it. And then for my partner, Beta. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> He's the simple one, if, if you couldn't uh, figure yep. that one out. Hope you enjoyed, and we will see you next time. Later.